so exercise 3 is this very similar to the previous exercise that you have three columns for a user table so like id name and email so that is around 100 bytes 500 million users are there right? so how much space will be required by user table for six years so i'll skip over it because it's very similar to the previous one sorry yeah then uh, let's move to the next exercise so this is where we are calculating the do we need to use bytes or bits we need to use bytes okay so if our api takes 100 millisecond to calculate the response and we are getting 100000 requests per second then how many servers will be needed so the question is that the api latency is 100 milliseconds and we are getting 100000 requests per second so how many servers would be needed okay so the first thing is that we need to identify the first step here is we have to identify that how many requests are served by one server in one second right. so so how many requests it will, will be served so we so if it is only one thread right so we know that one second is 1000 milliseconds i hope you uh, remember this part maybe i'll refresh it again so we know that one thread is serving one api right? and let's say in it is taking 100 milliseconds 100 millisecond means the request comes to the thread here it accepts the request it does some background processing and then serves the response so uh, this part takes uh, let's say 100 milliseconds right so that means this one thread is able to serve 10 requests per second So in our case also, um, we can identify that, okay, 1000 by 100. So 10 requests, but by one thread, right? And we have seen in the numbers to remember, right? we can say that there are 250 threads. Right. So we multiply it by 250. So that means 2500 requests per second can be served by one server. Now we know that the requests per second which are expected are 100,000. So we just need to divide 100,000 by 2500. Right. So this comes to 40. That means if my 40 servers, if they run at 100% CPU capacity, then I'm able to serve 100,000 requests per second. But we have previously seen that we should be running our servers at 50% capacity in terms of CPU. Right. So what we will do is that we'll divide this 40 by 50%. So which, is, so, which means if we expand it, 50% is it becomes this. And then this 
becomes oh sorry, this becomes just indirectly a b. It becomes a b. That means we need a t servers here. Yeah, uh, when we are talking about latency, it's in milliseconds. When we are talking about the data requirements, the granularity is bytes, milliseconds and bytes. Right. So, so that is why we are dividing it by 50%. So uh, there was a question that why don't we multiply it? So if I multiply 40 with 50%, then it becomes 20, right? So that's why we are dividing it. Now, if I go back to the previous one where we calculated the size of disk requirements, right? So we had identified that 200, maybe a fresh one. So we had identified that 200 terabytes are needed to store the metadata, right? Now, this is the assumption that should sure, i'll explain this step one again so so 200 terabytes are needed and we saw that our disk should be running at 70 percent capacity so we divide 200 by 70 percent very rough calculation we can see that it will be 300 around so we would be needing Oh, sorry. Okay, I messed the point. Okay, so 200 terabytes is something uh, we need to store, right? And we saw that one server takes 100 terabyte. Right? So that means we need just two servers, 200 by 100. We need just two servers here. And these two servers would be running at 100% disk capacity. So, so uh, we need to have some kind of buffer here. So, so, uh, so there are two things which we need to do. First is that you apply, you add the buffer here. Right? So you add the buffer. So you divide this two by 70%. So this is three. So you need three servers. But you also need to have replication here. So, um, replication factor, right? So, the replication factor comes into the picture here, replication factor. So, which is uh, at a minimum, it should be three. What does it mean? That the copy of, that, that the data is, What is a good number for replication? Should we always use three? Yeah, uh, like a minimum we can take three. It's uh, good for calculation. Again, like five, seven, nine. These are very application specific decisions that you will be taking in the real world. Right. So if for the purpose of interview, three is fine. Unless interviewer, the discussion with your interviewer goes to some other tangent about the extra reliability or some kind of multi data center applications. In those cases, you can think about some other numbers as well. But uh, three is a good number. So replication factor of three means that that uh, that data is copied three times. So so it will be uh, it's copied on three servers. So so what we uh, need to do is. That, uh, that okay, so we have identified that three servers are needed, right? So, so we will, uh, so in actual, we will have nine servers. Okay, so uh, there was a question on explaining the previous calculations again. So, I'll do that. So we need uh, we know that the latency of one API is 100 milliseconds. This is what we have established with the interviewer. And second thing we have established with the interviewer is that 100,000 requests per second are coming to our system. 
so first step is we have to identify that how many requests will be served by one server in one second once we have this number then we can just extrapolate it so now we know that one second is 1000 milliseconds right? so i specify here. so 1000 one second is 1000 milliseconds and we know that 100 millisecond is being taken care uh, is taken by one api call so that means my one thread will be able to serve 10 requests per second and how many threads are there in one server there are 250 threads that we have seen in the previous num important numbers to remember so that means we uh, one commodity server can serve 2000 requests per second want to become a software engineer at google you can like thousands of our students you just need to learn from those who've already cleared fang interviews at interview kickstart our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like google and facebook our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including back-end, full-stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today.